Hi there, Virgo. Thank you for joining me for your year 2018 forecast. And what a year this can be for you. It really can be utterly memorable. It kicks off in the most fantastic of ways with a combination between Mars and Jupiter in the part of your horoscope to do with the way you express yourself. Now, don't be surprised if you're much more forthright throughout 2018, but in a very enthusiastic way. So if you've got something that's important that you want to say, or there's something important you want to learn, this can be a year where you're really reinvigorated by this extra energy. Don't be surprised if you're moving around a lot more too, that you find yourself more physically active. This could be through walking, swimming. It could be through running. It could be through cycling. The more that you are shifting yourself, your body around, the more it will love it. Now, Saturn, the planet of structure, was, of course, uh, over the last two and a half years, located in a very emotional part of your situation, one which is very much to do with your foundations. Now, on the 20th of December last year, Saturn relocated into a new home, one which is much more to do with your self-expression. But this is also an area which is to do with love, romance and pleasures, creativity. And over the next two and a half years, you may find yourself having to work very hard at these areas. And in some situations, if something isn't quite working as well as it could do, you may find yourself deciding to make some big decisions. But because the Sun is combining with Venus in the most glorious location at the turn of this year, love and romance are very real possibilities for you this year. So if a relationship does come to a close, it's because something better is definitely going to be coming through for you. And the Sun and Venus are combining with Neptune at the turn of 2018. Neptune's the planet of dreams, but since 212 it's been in the part of your scope to do with how you relate. So there may have been some relationships during that time that have inspired but also confused you. But this combination is wonderful because it's asking you to tune into your senses, to listen to your hunches when it comes to your relationships. But certainly if you need to add some charm, some sparkle or charisma to any situation, don't be fearful about uh, showing this side of your nature. So this can be a very exuberant start to the year for you. One which really gives you an opportunity to showcase just exactly who you are, your unique being. And yet, despite this, Mercury, your ruler, is in a more muted location until the early part of January. So there may be part of you where you have to work out any negative thinking that you could have the tendency to get into from time to time. So if you can, stay on the front foot. Believe that this can be your year, because then it certainly can be. Now this takes us up to the 31st of uh, January and a total lunar eclipse. Now I should say to you, there is no total solar eclipse this year at all. But this total lunar eclipse occurs in a very tender, emotional part of your situation, the 12th house. But it's also linking with Neptune in a less positive way in the part of your scope to do with relationships. If you have got a relationship where sincerity is not the main uh, part of the relationship, where you're not absolutely sure that you can rely on someone, where trust is an issue. It could come up in the following six months. Ironically, by the time of the partial uh, solar eclipse in the middle of February, your ruler Mercury is going to be alongside the Sun. And this suggests that your criti critical abilities your abilities to sort the wheat from the chaff, to be discriminated, can be very positive in the following six months and be a counterpoint for the more emotional, sometimes fearful energies that could come from the lunar eclipse. Now, the last few days of March sees Mars burst into that part of your horoscope that's all to do with your self-expression, but then immediately connects with Saturn. Now, when Mars and Saturn get together in a conjunction, it does give us an awesome opportunity to achieve a great deal, but not if we're spreading ourselves too thinly. So it's very, very important that you focus whatever creative talents and energies you've got, 
or if it's a love relationship you're wanting to make a success of or it's anything to do with your children if you have them in terms of their talent you can't really spread yourself too thinly during this period of time so narrow things down and again your critical abilities can be very helpful in this regard and the better you will do if things don't go to plan your emotions could be much closer to the surface and frustration can can overspill but this only will happen if really I feel that you're trying to do too much. By the middle of April, the 18th, Saturn goes into a retrograde, one which is going to last until the 6th of September. So this is a more serious phase for all these creative potentials, but it doesn't mean to say it's a negative one, but I do think you will have to roll up your sleeves even uh, further and really apply yourself. Mars then moves on towards the end of the month and in the last phase, the last week of the month, is combining with Pluto. Now, if you are single during this period of time, you're going to be given out an awesome amount of charismatic energy, uh, a very uh, masculine energy, which could draw someone to you, but equally it could put someone off if you're a little bit too forceful. So whatever it is you're trying to achieve, it can't be in terms of only you getting something from it. It must work for the other person too. Otherwise you could run into some backlashes, some hostility and some defensiveness from other people. But I do feel that your sex appeal will be very, very high in that latter part of April. Now the middle part of May sees Uranus, the planet of change, the planet of variety, shifting out of Aries. Now, it's been in Aries full-time since 2011. It was briefly there for five months in 2010. And there's a similar pattern this year, quite frankly. So through to the 6th of November, Uranus is going to be in a tremendous location for you. One which is all about discovery. It's about change, about widening your horizons. And whether it's about your work or where you live or the type of holiday destination you go to or the type of interest you're going to have, you're going to be much more uh, inquisitive and may want to break down anything that's not working very well for you. But remember, Jupiter continues to be in a very inquisitive part of your horoscope anyway. And Jupiter is about fortune. So the more information that you're gaining this year, the better your decision making will become. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Yet by the 7th of August, Uranus goes back into a retrograde and by, as I say, the 6th of November, it comes to an end in its time in Taurus this year and reverses back into Aries. So you get a little bit more of a, uh, a, 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 a repeat of what you've been used to since 2011. But if you find yourself wanting to break out into any straight jackets, be much more galvanised in your approach, it really wouldn't be a surprise from the middle of May. Now, the 22nd, 27th, I beg your pardon, of July sees another total lunar eclipse. But this one's going to be occurring in Aquarius, and it's going to be conjunct Mars. Now, this is going to require some care, quite frankly. Because when the Moon gets together with Mars, it can be a bit volatile. And something in the last six months, or the following six months, can seem a little bit out of balance for you, if you've got very high expectations. Now, the partial solar eclipse, which occurs on the 11th of August, is asking you to be much more conscious of the things that have evolved over a period of time for you, and they may not necessarily be tangible things. Tangible things is something you can relate to, but they may be more ephemeral. But this does, this particular partial eclipse, forge a great link with Venus, and I think it's possible in the second half of 2018 that your financial situation can improve on the back of past effort and endeavour. And that's something that can really please you. But I think you may have to accept that certain elements of your life are not necessarily quite perfect and not get too stressed out by the things that aren't running quite as you'd like because that's just the way life can be sometimes, unfortunately. Now, on the 6th of September, as I explained before, Saturn is going to come to the end of its retrograde. However, this retrograde is 
uh, as it goes forwards again, it's still going to be in an area which is about achievement for you. It is about progress, but it is continuing to add perspiration to your inspiration. Now, the last quarter or third of the year is going to be super exciting for you, not least when on the 6th of September, Venus moves into the third house of your scope, which is where Mars and Jupiter joined together at the start of the year and gave you all that thrust and enthusiasm. But Venus in this location is a lot to do with charm and persuasiveness. It's not necessarily so much to do with the force that comes from Mars or the enthusiasm that comes from Jupiter. And of course, Jupiter itself is going to be switching signs, which will occur on November the 11th and moves for you into the part of your horoscope which is very much to do with your emotions but it can be a tremendous opportunity in the following year to grow anything to do with the foundations of your life but i think generally socially you are going to be busy in this latter part of the year and of course uranus is going to retain its place in taurus through to the early part of november too now, although it's tracking backwards, I think this is an opportunity to mix with much more unusual people, to widen your horizons, to be much more daring as you have been earlier in the year. So the combination with Venus suggests that ideas are going to be pinging around. And if you're wanting to address your romantic situation, your mode of communication is going to be a big clue. This could come through text messages or emails, which could turn out to be fated as can a dating site or someone you encounter in your locality. But as the year comes to a close, Saturn is still there. It's still with you. It's still asking you to sweat your talent. And that's going to be the central theme of this year. It's all about your self-expression, but framing it in a way which gives you some kind of tangible return. But your communication, your ideas, the way you communicate is all going to be central to this. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. Good luck in 2018 and goodbye for now. Thank you for joining me. If you'd like to know more, please visit my website at www.patrickarundel.com or download my free app in iOS, Google or Facebook at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thanks and goodbye.